In this video, I'll show you how to create realistic cloudy skies in Blender. First, we're going to create the typical fluffy clouds called cumulus. Then we'll adjust them to be stratus clouds, which are great for overcast or stormy scenes. First, to make the cumulus clouds, add in a cube and make it about 1.5 kilometers high and 100 wide. Then apply the scale and move it up to about 3000 meters. To be able to properly see the clouds, you will have to increase the viewport view distance by a lot. By the way, the same goes for the camera as well. Just really quick, if you don't want to create this cloud system yourself, then it is available on my Gumroad package as a convenient collection of node groups with adjustable parameters to customize the clouds. But now go to the shading workspace, add in a Warner texture and set its scale to 10. Then connect the vector to the object coordinates. Now it's way too small, so add in a vector math node, set to scale and set the scale value to something crazy low like this. Now if you invert the Warner texture, you can see that there are multiple blobs across the height of the cube. And that is a problem because later each of them will be a cloud and we can't have them stacking up like this. So to fix that, add in a mapping node and set the Z scale to zero. Now we have to recover the round that we lost by doing that. So plug the generated coordinates into a separate XYZ node and plug the Z output into a color ramp with the interpolation set to ease. Then make all the colors black and add a third one which should be white. Then multiply the inverted Warner texture with the output of the color ramp and plug the output of that into a math node set to greater than. Lastly, to make them thicker at the bottom, slide the white color to about this place here on the color ramp. All right, now we have the base shape done, so we just have to make it more cloud-like and add more detail. To do that, add a noise texture. The settings here seem to work great. And multiply it with this math node here. So after multiplying the Warner with the color ramp, but before the greater than. To control the influence this has on the size of the clouds, add in a bright contrast node and set the bright value to 0.5. And that made the shape much more cloud-like. But now to add some blobbiness to the clouds, add another multiply node and connect the Warner texture with these settings here to the bottom. And that looks pretty bad for two reasons. First, you need to invert the Warner. And second, its effect on the cloud shape is too strong. To fix that, add another bright contrast node with these settings here. Feel free to play around with them to customize the clouds to your liking. There's still not enough detail, so let's keep going. Add another noise texture with these settings and plug it into a bright contrast node with again a value of 0.5. Also, you should set the contrast to 3. Then multiply that with the previous multiply node. And now, do the exact same thing again, but this time with these noise texture settings instead. Great! Now we have a detailed cloud shape, but we still need to make a material for them. So add a principled volume node and plug it into the volume socket. Then connect the output of the greater than node to the density. Now you can add a multiply node to control how dense the clouds should be. Just as a side note here, if it seems that the density of the clouds just isn't increasing no matter how high you crank the multiply node, then the issue is that the step rate is too high. So just go into the material settings and reduce it. The drawback of doing so, however, is that the render will take longer. I'll show you how to speed it up a little later in the video. Then make sure the clouds have the right size by checking with the ruler tool. They should be around one kilometer wide, but if they aren't, change this scale value here until they are. Lastly, when we look at how this type of cloud looks in real life, we can see that they aren't just uniformly distributed like the ones we made. So to make our clouds, let's call it splotchy, go back to the base Warner texture and duplicate it. Then reduce the scale and plug the result of the invert node into a map range node. Afterwards, subtract the result of that from the base border texture. To control the size and fall off of the, I'll call it cookie cutter, change the min and max value of the map range node as well as the scale of the border texture. You can also tweak the greater than at the end to further control the coverage and scale of the clouds. All right, now you might have noticed that the render is painfully slow. So to speed it up a bit, you need to enable fast GI approximation and set the bounces to two to make it look a bit more correct. And that should do it. Afterwards, just to make the clouds look a bit better, set the volumetric light bounces to 2 as well. But now the hard part is over, because to change the clouds we already created into other cloud types only takes tiny changes. So to make the alto cumulus clouds, just duplicate the clouds we made and put them at around 7000 meters. Then after you scale the cube up on the x and y axes only, the alto cumulus clouds are done. For the serial cumulus clouds, it's the same, but you have to put them at 12,000 meters. Now we can move on to the stratus clouds, and these require a little bit more work, but nothing serious. So duplicate the cumulus clouds and make the material a single user. For this type of cloud, it's important for the cookie cutter to be detailed. So to achieve that, add a mix node to the vector right here and set the mode to linear light. Then plug the color output of a noise texture into the bottom color. After that, increase the detail and set the scale to 10. Lastly, set the mix factor to something like 
6.3 and that should take care of the cookie cutter. After that swap out the greater than at the end for a map range node and that will give you a smooth fall off. Then just tweak the min and max values as well as the density of the clouds. To make the alto and zero variants of the Stratus cloud just duplicate the normal one and move it to 7000 and 12000 respectively. And that's all the cloud types done. So this is where the real fun starts because just using any single one of them can work in a lot of situations but when layering the different types of clouds together like in this render here it just gives them that super nice detailed layered look. All right, two things left. First, if you want to change the seed of the clouds, you can do so by changing all noise textures to 4D and plugging a value node into all the W inputs. Then if you change the value, the seed of the clouds will change. And second, if you want to animate the clouds, you can do so by really, really slowly animating the seed, as well as adding a mapping node to the beginning right here and animating the X and Y location. I found that the seed should be animated about 25 times slower than the location because else the cloud animation looks pretty flickery. Remember, clouds move slowly, so just keep that in mind. But that's it for this video, so if it helped you at all, please consider subscribing or check out this video next.